Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about switch statements. A switch statement is a means of selecting from different options. Think of it like a train yard where you can switch the rails uh, and send trains down different tracks. Essentially, it's a modified if, else if, else type structure. It's another way of writing if statements, but it only works with exact equivalency comparison. So you're always comparing if an expression is equal to something else. You can't do ranges or things like that. So it doesn't fit all cases. That said, they're extremely useful and I use them all the time. So here we have a simple flowchart for a switch statement. Up here, we have the expression that is evaluated. Now in most switch statements, your expression is going to be a single variable, but it could be a function or something even longer than that. So you're gonna have the expression, it's gonna get evaluated, and then its result will be compared first to this case, and if it matches, it will go do this code, and then it will finish. If it doesn't match though, it'll come down here, compare itself, if it matches, go do this code, and end. And then, if there are no matches, and you have a default option, then it will do that, and it'll end. This is not required, so you could skip it, you could just have it check, check, and then if there's no match, just go down here and in. Now, unfortunately, the most complicated part of a switch statement is not understanding it or how to use it, but actually typing it correctly in code. So we're going to walk through it in a slightly more formal way. I've taken this almost exactly from the GameMaker Studio 2 manual. Remember that the manual is a great place for information like this. So we have the expression which like I said, in most cases will be a simple variable, but it could be a function or something else. So the expression gets evaluated and then it goes through each case where case is typed like this. You type the keyword case, then you type the thing that it's gonna be equal to, and then you use a colon. Then you can type as much code as you want down here. This is the code that will run if there's a match. And then you type break. Uh, the break is a keyword, which I'll have a whole tutorial on. The important thing to know here though, is that you must type it or the code won't stop. And we'll talk about this in a moment because that might be something you want. But in general, case, expression, colon, code, break. You can have as many cases as you want. And if you want, you can have default colon and then your code. This is the default case. It operates like an else in an if else statement. It's the code that will run if there's no matches up here. So that might be a little bit confusing, but hopefully it will be clear with a couple examples. So here is a very basic switch case. So we have switch, the keyword switch. Then we have weather, again, just a simple variable in this case. And then we have the various cases. We're only using two cases here. We're not using any default. So if there's no exact match, this code won't run at all. So we're saying does weather equal weather.raining. This is an enum, by the way. Uh, you can see the enum tutorial for more on those. So you're saying, does weather equal weather.raining? If so, show debug message, drive to work. Does weather equal weather.sunny? If so, show debug message, bike to work. And if there isn't an exact match, again, this code won't run. We're going to see some examples in code. Uh, but before I get there, I want to talk about fall through or what happens if you don't use the break keyword and the default case. So if you don't use the break keyword, once there's a match, the code will keep running. So in this case, if current weather equals weather.sunny, then it's going to say show debug message it's sunny, but notice there's no break here. And as a result, it will keep going and it will run this code regardless of whether or not it matches this expression. And of course it can't because current weather can't be both this and this. If current weather equals weather.cloudy, it'll run just this code. So if you don't put a break statement, your code keeps running. And this is one of the easiest ways to mess up a switch statement, but it also gives you some nice abilities. It means you can group a bunch of categories of things and run the same code for each of them. And then of course we have the default case. Like I said, this works just like the else in an if else statement. You can see the conditional statement tutorial for more on that but it will run if there's no matches. So here, current weather does not equal weather.sunny or weather.cloudy, then you'll get this debug message. Okay, let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 and see some examples in code. All right, I've already run the program and stopped at this breakpoint, and now we're just gonna step through it. 
Before we do that, though, I just want to note I've created an enum for weather here. We have weather, and then we have sunny, cloudy, rainy, snowy, and icy. And you don't need to add numbers for enums, but I've done it here just so that when they show up in the debugger, we can easily look and see what that number means. Okay, so first we're going to make current weather equal weather.rainy. You can see down here, current weather equals three, three is rainy. What we would expect then is current weather to go and find this and then print this debug message. And you can see it checks against this, skips everything else, checks against this, doesn't match, skips everything, checks against this, and three, weather.rainy is three. So it goes in and it says show debug message, it's raining which is what it does. It's raining. Sorry, I know that's probably very small. And then it hits the break and it will skip the rest of this code. There we go. And then just as a function of how the debugger works, it always sort of goes to this last line, uh, but it doesn't mean it's run that code. Okay, so now we're gonna switch current weather to weather.sunny and we're gonna see an example of fall through. So here, current weather now equals weather.sunny. You can see it down here, one, weather.sunny, so this is gonna match, and then it's gonna immediately jump down here and run this code. Show uh, debug message bike to work. Again, break, go down to the end. You can see bike to work. All right, and now for the last one, we're gonna switch it to weather.snowy, and now you can see that's not gonna match any of these cases. So current weather equals to four. Yep, there we go. It's not gonna match not gonna match, not gonna match. So it's gonna come down here to the default case, print the show debug message, drive to work, and break. Over here, drive to work, test done. So why use switch statements? Well, the primary use for switch statements is code readability. I like them a lot. I probably tend to overuse them, but I find that they make things easier to read, easier to debug, and easier, therefore, to maintain. Also, in many languages, switch statements are faster to execute than if-else chains. Um, I don't know if that's true in GameMaker Studio 2 because I don't know what the underlying code looks like, but it's something to keep in mind. So in summary, switch statements are great when you need to exactly match an expression against a discrete set of possible values, and they improve your code readability but you got to be careful with breaks, and they're not good for everything. As always, the links in this slide will be below, along with links to the source code and the slides themselves. I also want to make a special note of this, how not to use a switch statement. This is a tutorial on the GMC forums tutorial page about some of the ways to use a switch statement incorrectly. And I think it can be very helpful, teach you a little bit more about switch statements and prevent you from making some easy mistakes. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.